Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, why do you like React and not Angular? So let's get into it. Now this was a question actually posted on to one of my oldest video, like a really old one, even before I have these shitty little thumbnails that I have. I know you don't like them and that's, a, you know, if you have a better thumbnail, please send it to me and I will use that instead. I'm a very, very lazy person. So this is a fair question. Why do I prefer React over Angular? And the honest answer is that I don't really have a strong preference between the two. It's just that I have worked with both of them for, I've learned, nowadays I've worked for a longer time, like for a longer time with uh, React than I have with Angular. But I have worked with both for long enough to be able to give you like kind of, you know, at least my views on these two solutions. So the reason why I prefer React over Angular is that React has a few things that makes it cons uh, be, uh, yeah. let me rephrase this. One of the biggest challenges that you will face when you do a, like when you make an SBA of some sort and you work on a large scale system of, of any kind is that you're going to face a lot of complexity and you're going to face a lot of legacy issues and you're going to have people of varying degree of skill level with different backgrounds joining into joining on joining into the project and contributing code and that means that the primary thing that you want to go for the absolute most important thing is simplicity and in my world react is I'm not saying setting it up. Setting up React is a, tri is a tricky thing. I'll touch on a few things as well, other things as well. But just doing regular everyday development in React is on average a simpler experience for a lot of people than it is in Angular. Let me explain. So the things that React do truly well is the props model like how actually how you get data into your components the the dom like the the actual node tree that they have constructed like for, for facebook has constructed it's a very simple concept that covers everything from dependency injection to all of this stuff that that may be like, traditionally is a very complicated thing this although this is a very limited approach to doing things that limitation, that lack of choice is a very good thing when you have people of varying skill level contributing, contributing to the same project. The reason is because you want people, you, the more choice you have, the likelier you are to face people trying to do their own thing in the project. And that's a very bad thing if you have some people who are really, really skilled and some people who are less skilled. And it doesn't really matter which type it is because the people who are truly skilled might actually make that fatal mistake of making some very elaborate, amazing implementation of something. And all of a sudden the people who are less skilled can't, like, don't, don't really understand it. And then that's basically just legacy. And the same thing goes for the people who are less skilled. They might just make a really shit implementation of something and that becomes legacy. So what you want is a very very narrow way of thing, things of uh, way of doing something. You ideally want one single way of doing something that has been proven over and over and over, and will con uh, will always pr uh, as much as possible, to the greatest extent possible, rather, produce the same results, cons uh, consistent results. That's what you're after. React does this very well. And the other part is the JSX syntax, which is basically well, it's a superset of HTML for a lot of people. And that is a very easy thing to comprehend. The problem with Angular is that, well, there are benefits to Angular as well. I mean, Angular from just starting up an Angular application is a lot easier. And other benefits to Angular is that because one of the biggest things that, oh, and I, that's one of the things I really don't like about React is the diversity in the ecosystem. And pe I mean, people will add libraries left and right. And the big, I, honestly, one of the biggest issues that I find with React is that people will add every single library they find. Like we, there's so much diversity in the ecosystem that people dr pull in like third party dependencies supported like by one single developer. And all of a sudden that doesn't work for no, for some reason. And now that's basic, and then that becomes legacy. 
that is a big issue, I will admit. I, there, so React isn't perfect by any means. There's tons of issues that you have to deal with there. That's one of the things that I really like about Angular. I, it's a proper framework. It is a like it's a like a all or nothing type of deal where you. I mean, if you go into it, you have all you have your entire ecosystem. That is a very good thing. You have all your tools. You can kind of align on things. There's one ecosystem. Usually, there's tons of packages that are provided to you by people, by organizations like by Google themselves or organizations that support these things fairly well. I I really like that. That's a good thing. However. The thing that I think that Angular has made, which uh, is a fairly fatal mistake, is that the approach that, that Angular takes to the SBA problem is very closely tied into the same sort of way that you do C Sharp and Java development, where you have these annota you have annotations, you have ways of injecting things, you and the the problem with that is that there is room for, like you have more freedom you have more freedom of how you want to actually construct your application. There is, like, there is usually only one way that you can build a React application. But in Angular, you can write it in several different ways. And that is a big problem because that means that you now, there, that puts, puts more, in my experience, it, put more, it puts more pressure on your team and your architecture because now you have to decide what a factor is to you, what is a provider to you and all these sorts of things. And you need to make sure that you enforce these rules because there are multiple ways to actually get to do these things. So, with that in mind, I think that that like, to me that is a, a bit of a hassle because the issue is that Angular is built as if it was designed for backend developers because the, and I mean it from for someone like myself who's been working both the .NET and in Java I understand I can, can kind of see the correlation between Angular and these the, these frame, like these languages and their way of approaching large scale development I can see the red thread the, uh, but as I said the issue is that although this makes sense for a back end developer who is accustomed to really think about application structure and architecture and really focus on these sorts of details. That is not the tale of a front-end developer in general. Front-end developers are not necessarily the same sort of people as back-end developers. And making a framework for a front-end developer or a front-end oriented problem in the same manner and with the same sort of nuances, if you will, as for a back-end developer, I think that that is a, is a mistake. So. Although it is powerful, I think Angular has made it. I basically, it's too. It's it's a little bit too loose for my tastes, and that usually is the reason why it fails, in my experience. And it's very similar to the jQuery issue, where jQuery is, although it's very powerful, it gives you simply, it simply gives you too much freedom. And unless you are truly a master of frontend you it's very often that you fuck up your project you have too much rope and you will hang yourself with it. it if you want to have consistent results it's actually better to have one single way of doing things and have that one way it mean it doesn't have to be the perfect solution in everybody's opinion it just have has to be something that is crystal clear super simple and will always, uh, and the majority of times, produce the same consistent results. So what I want you to take away from this is that I don't, honest to God, I don't really have a strong opinion on Angular versus React. I prefer React because I think the actual application development and the architecture in React is a lot simpler than it is in Angular. But I see pros and cons with both frameworks. It's just that my, in my personal experience, it is easier to scale a React application over time simply because you have people from varying, varying levels, varying levels of the skill level, skill level, contributing to the project. And if that is the case, going for the simplest possible thing that you can find is a very good bet. Although Angular is very powerful and has a lot of other benefits and less limitations than React has. I will, I will, I will rather go with the simple, simpler solution rather than all that empowerment. At least if I'm working with a range of different people on a big project, have a great day.